So basically today uh, we are going to discuss the fossil Homo habilis. Right. So we already know that for any fossil, the approach that you have to take in your answer is the time period. The kind of environment that is present there, geographical distribution, morphological features, which include cranial and postcranial, cranial and postcranial features, and then cultural features. At the end, you have to discuss the phylogenetic status. Right. So these are the things that you have to focus if you are writing an answer with respect to fossil. Okay. So most of the times, They'll be asking you a direct question. Sometimes they'll try to ask on the specific features. So they might be asking the comparison of physical features of one fossil with the other or the reason behind the extinction of particular fossil. Okay. So these might be the questions. So what do you understand by the word habilis? And why is it included in the genus home? Because we have seen from the ancestral primates, the immediate forerunner of genus homo was Australopithecus. Why the fossil is not called as Australopithecus habilis, rather, why is it called Homo habilis? So that we'll look into. So first, where is it found? It is found in the East Africa around 2.3 million years ago to 1.4 million years ago. So the time period is 2.3 to 1.4. Geographical distribution is in the East Africa. Okay, you have Old Boy got where the fossil was discovered for the first time in 1960 by Louis Leakey. So Louis Leakey has discovered the fossil for the first time in 1960. Okay. And the famous fossil, okay, you you will be finding somewhere around 20 fossils that have been discovered with respect to Homo habilis. And the most famous is KNM ER 1970. This is the fossil which has been found at the Kobe Forum. So this is the very famous fossil of Homo habilis. Now you have seen the geographical distribution, time period. You need to know what are the morphological features? And when you're talking about the morphological features, you should not talk in isolation. Rather, you should use an explanation of why and what. Okay. So if you're talking about particular feature, so what is it? How is it looking like? Is it similar to humans? Or is it more similar or closer to ancestral primates? So that you have to talk about rather than mentioning that it is having large incisors, large canines or small molars or small premolars. 
Okay, so the major development that has been observed here is with respect to cranial capacity. So coming to morphological features of Homo habilis. This cranial capacity. Cranial capacity is 600 to 800. So that means an average cranial capacity that is noticed is 700. Okay, so it is between 600 to 800. That means there is increase in the cranial capacity. So when there is increase in the cranial capacity and that has been found, okay, so in the cranial fossils that have been found, they observed that the frontal lobe has been increased. That means in the brain, if you notice, sorry. this part has increased, the frontal lobe. Okay, so when the frontal lobe increases, there is a chance of cranium becoming more round in shape. Okay, so compared to Australopithecus, the cranial features are more round in shape. Okay, so if you see that Robustus was having sagittal crest. Okay, so sagittal crest, if you see yesterday's class, we have discussed that Robustus So it is having a sagittal crest. So sagittal crest, right? So and pronounced draw ridges. So this sagittal crest, why is it present? Because when you have to chew very hard things, your lower jaw or the mandible has to be very powerful in order to crush or grind. So all the muscles has to make effort. So these muscles are attached in the cranium okay so that is the reason you notice the sagittal crest now this started disappearing to an extent in the homo habilis so the changes from australopithecus to homo habilis we are talking one after the other first we have begin from the top so if you notice in the cranial part it has become rounded cranial capacity increased and the bro ridges are also less pronounced. So this is with respect to craniofacial features. So now, if you go to the dental features, in the dental features, since here the jaw is smaller in size, see, one more thing you need to understand, this has become smaller. When this is reduced, automatically this will also reduce, right? So these are the things. Now the jaw, reduced and the lower jaw, the dental pattern is parabolic, which is similar to humans. It is parabolic in nature. And second thing is that with respect to teeth, so what is observed, there is premolars, which are similar to humans. Premolars are similar to humans and parabolic shape is also similar to humans. The size of the molars reduced and the canines, though not as large as Australopithecus gracile, okay, in gracile what we observed Robinson's dietary hypothesis that since canine are larger in size and molars are smaller in size, that means it is dependent on the meat and it has become omnivores. Okay, so it is omni uh, what do you call it? it is carnivores in nature. And whereas robustus, since it is having strong mandible because it has to crack nuts, so here the molars are large in size because it needs more surface. Occlusal surface. If you see, if you take the teeth, this is known as occlusal surface. More surface is needed to crush the nuts. Okay, hard nuts. So here, from this, we have come to conclusion that 
from the Robinson's dietary hypothesis that robustness is herbivores, and whereas Australopithecus is carnivores. Now here you will notice that the molars are smaller in size and canines are larger in size. That means the diet has shifted. Okay, diet the diet has shifted, and the reason for the shift of the diet I'll tell you. Okay, so first try to understand the morphological features, cranial capacity, cranial shape. Less pronounced bro ridges, then coming to dental features, parabolic in nature, then coming to teeth. Okay, so larger canines compared to molars. So these are the morphological features. Okay, and the people that you have to remember while talking about Homo habilis is first, we have already seen who has found it Louis Leakey, Tobias. Poirier, Dalan. So these are the some of the famous people who has worked with Homo habilis fossils. So Leakey, Tobias, Poirier, Napier. These people by observing craniofacial features and these things. So they considered as okay. So if you see these three people, who are the three? Leakey, Tobias, Napier. So these people has observed the features, craniofacial features, and they have placed the fossil between Australopithecus and Erectus. Okay. So it has an intermediate between the Homo erectus and Australopithecus by observing these features and dentition. Has been discussed by B. M. Das. You know the physical anthropology book of this. So B. M. Das and Leakey et al. So these people talked about the unique dental attributes that are present with respect to Homo habilis. And if you see the now we have talked about it. Now we are going to the limbs. So if you observe the hind limbs are larger in size. Okay. So this means. The Poirier, you can write any of them because everybody has this. The Poirier and Napier has said that this is the adaptation to the bipedalism so by looking at it. So now, this is with respect to morphological features. I told that first you have to look at time period. The environment is same for a long period of time. Till the Neanderthals comes, it is a lower Paleolithic period. So then you have Geographical distribution, we have seen it, and then morphological features, cranial and postcranial. Now coming to the cultural features. So Homo habilis is also known as handyman. Okay, handyman for the reason that they were the first ones to hold the tools and use the tools, and the kind of culture or the tool tradition. That was formed was old oil, gorge, old oil gorge tool tradition. Okay, so this tool tradition, what are the tools that are present? So you might be aware in archaeology. So the tools are chopper chopping tools and the pebbles. Chopper chopping tools. So they are using, you can see this is the chopper. So they used to break the larger pebble stones and they used to create a chopper. So using the chopper, they used to hunt and it is, they used to hunt, they used to chop and they used to consume. Since they can chop, they can grind it right now. Okay, so they can grind it right now before consuming. So that means their effort on the jaws reduced. Okay, and chopper chopping tools and observing the shift of environment is also noticed that because East African area has moved from the forest to the savanna, dry savanna area. 
so this change in environment has been noticed and the shift in the diet has also been noticed that they have become omnivorous in nature so this is with respect to the culture that was happening along with this there were base camps so in old boy gorge there is a base camp known as dk1 and there is other gombor one so this is at old boy gorge these base camps has been studied by i told you dolling so here i told you few of the famous scholars that you have to remember okay darling is the one who talked about this and they suggested that these camps may have enabled for the care of the young and a kind of primitive social organization might have been present over there so from the evidence of these base camps so now you have understood the morphological features and the cultural features as well so now coming to the phylogenetic status why don't you call it australopithecus genus rather why are you calling it homo homo genus okay why are you placing it in genus homo so there are a set of people who do not agree and there are a set of people who agree to put it genus homo so first and foremost who do not agree first you should know who say that this habilis this fossils that are present these are the progressive versions of australopithecus who are the people proirian and bm das these are the two people who believe that this is a progressive version of australopithecus and not the one with genus homo okay so you have proirian and das bm das and proirian so these are the two people who do not agree then there are set of people you have louis leakey and we have also seen the tobias snapier so these all people say that increased the cranial capacity the ability to use tools which are the features of humans so they are close to humans and hence for we can place them under genus homo okay so and they believe that this is a transition this is a transitional fossil between australopithecus and homo erectus okay so the conclusion is that homo habilis has been discovered by for, uh, sorry discovered by scholars or researchers like leakey tobias napier and these people have observed certain features but by observing those features they were little confused whether this fossil belongs to homo fossil or is it the progressive version of australopithecus so there is a division between them with respect to this agreement and some of them argued that this is a progressive version and some of them argued that this is the evolved version of australopithecus and the transitional phase between australopithecus and homo erectus so this is with respect to homo habilis and in the next class we'll look at homo erectus thank you